Hey, Shannon, how's it going? Hey, good afternoon or good evening. <laughs> evening over here, uh, right. Texas time, six central. Um, you know, we record these in the evening time, you know, given uh, my my crazy schedule with work, my full time job. But I appreciate you coming on. I'm really excited to talk with you this evening about your role um, as VP of global sales at Bovida. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you too. Anytime we can get a chance to talk to other people in the community, we're we're open to that. So excited to have a fun uh, conversation about cannabis. Absolutely, and you know it's it's actually really timely because my Bovida ten pack actually just came in the mail. Um, I have a subscription on Amazon, and I'm I mean as I was, as I was telling you before we started recording, I'm a huge fan of the product. I mean, you know cannabis of course needs to be in a in a certain tempered environment right because it can dry out or it can get you know too wet and and too moist which of course is not good for the flower and uh bovida really you know strikes that balance so um before we get into the company and its history and you know kind of what y'all's overall mission is let's get a sense of of you Shannon i mean tell us a little bit about your background um, and you know, what led you to becoming the VP of, of global sales? Sure. Uh, how much time do we have? It feels like the background is long and especially in this cannabis community, it's colorful, but, um, yeah, I, I started off in business knowing that I wanted to be somewhere around, um, creating and facilitating relationships, right. Building relationships with people, getting, an understanding of their business and being a consultant and sales really kind of encompassed all of the things that I wanted relationship building, uh, product management, a, a, a company with a story. Um, my career has led me down different institutions to support and in sales in some way, all vast across all boards, CPG, um, electronics, golf, sports equipment, uh, traditional business, small privately held, large fortune 100 companies, fortune 50 companies. But the end result really existed that I two things had to be apparent. I wanted to work for a company that had a story with integrity and, and a true product that could make a difference. And I also wanted to work in an environment with a culture that was creative and explorative and if that's a word, <laughs> exploring, um, you know, just a, in an environment where I felt like I was being challenged in the scientific, innovative side of Bovida, matched with the 25 year company history, um, you know, trump that with the cannabis environment and just excited to be a part of an emerging nascent market. Um, and then connected to wellness and, and science, Bobita just ended up being a good fit for me. And the culture and the vision and the strategy um, that existed pre my coming here six years ago, but especially the pivots that are made to support the cannabis industry has, has proven to be that that was a good choice for me. So I started with Bovida about five years ago um, as the global sales manager. We have three divisions, uh, guitar, cigar, and cigars and weed in cannabis, right? Moisture dependency started in the cigar business. So when I came over to Bovida, I was supporting all three of those business verticals. And about three years ago, we made the decision that it was really important that we isolate the cannabis environment from a executive standpoint and really focus on that at a global level. And because of that, I had to step away a little bit from cigars and musical instruments, but still a fan of those two channels. And they definitely um, complement the cannabis side. Yeah, I mean, so because you're focused specifically on the cannabis division within Bovida, um, or I guess you oversee that department, uh, what has been your experience? Like, what have you brought from other traditional industries um, that that are, are similar? I mean, cannabis, the industry is very unique, right? Due to the regulations and um, just all the red tape that's involved from a federal and even state level. So um, what have you seen as, you know, potential challenges and obstacles, if any, from Bovida's standpoint as an ancillary cannabis product? Well, you know, dare I say that 
are there ever, is there ever a place that there aren't challenges? I mean, there are environments now where we're talking to people that, you know, not saying knock on wood, you never say this is as tough as it gets, but if you're able to grit it out and be in this side of the market with the ever changing rules and regulatory, um, just even understanding it and feeling knowledgeable enough to comment on it at such a granular micro level makes it challenging for an ancillary business like Bovida to look at a global landscape without getting lost in the weeds. And, um, but I would say a couple things. First and foremost, I've learned more from cannabis than I've brought to it. Because though I have a lot of traditional business experience, the, the inner workings of a plant, regulatory, 280E, compliance, quality, culture. I mean, those things are so um, broad and important in this category that it's just, it's learning from that. But I, I will say this, I think at the root of it, all businesses try to achieve the same thing. You know, they try to make a quality product in the marketplace where they can be the category leader or a contributing agent to it. Um, and they, they try to do things to be, to optimize their business primarily looks like revenue and some of those numbers, but it also exists in culture and team health and, you know, long-term planning, long range planning, building really great teams, building resilience to the marketplace, especially in the climate that we're in right now. So my traditional background in large scale volume in both uh, CPG food packaging and also in marketing and kind of a sports equipment side blend to give some nice work experience per se that can kind of guide when people ask us certain questions of why should we do things a certain way, albeit best practices, we can take those from all these different arenas, not just myself, but my peers who come from so many different arenas here at Bovida. And it's just another value add that we bring to our customer experience. Yeah. And tenure. yeah I mean, there, there are definitely certain traits or skill sets that can translate in the industry, right. Or best practices even, um, obviously there, it is unique the way you would need to market and sell, um, the product because again, of all the regulations and whatnot. But, um, if you have, you know, 20 plus years under your belt, that doesn't hurt. <laughs> right. I mean, right. working, um, you know, within small to medium to large corporations, like you mentioned, uh, talk to me about, so with Bovida, um, how important is, the product, especially as it comes to like um, the actual commercial side, right? The retail side where, you know, they may have flour in the dispensary um, and the importance of keeping that flour fresh. Sure. Um, well, most people can agree. What we love the most about the cannabis plant is it's complex and unique, right? It's unique in the fact that it is not mass produced and manufactured and engineered to be all the same. But we are looking for some consistency in it because it's a deliverable that the consumer is asking for. So what we found in proper protection of plant, not just in the overall smoke and the customer appreciation of the quality, but truly what do these terpenes do? And, and, and has, as they interact with each of our unique bodies, what are they doing? Well, what Bovida's technology allows for is the terpenes that are present at the time of harvest, if stored with Bovida, will be present at the time of usage for the, the customer. And that's what our clients in this side, the commercial client is our client, is looking to achieve. We're not impeding on the the practice of cultivation, genetics, all of the good um, best practices in actually growing and cultivating the plant. Once that plant has been cut from its water source, Bovida is there to achieve good standing through consumption, cure to consumption. And so we do believe that, uh, and we know for certain that hydrated um, plant or, you know, operating within the relative humidity guidance of 55 to 65 is going to achieve optimal smoke. It's going to achieve 
you know, it's going to protect against the evaporation of your assets, both in the flower and just the financial risk. And it's also going to drive, you know, some consumer loyalty through consistency, which we know is a problem plaguing the majority of brands in the marketplace right now is getting that lifetime value and repetitive customer purchase. And that's through shelf life. So um, that side of our technology, we believe is, is preserving people's passions and protecting the passions for which they curate. Mm-hmm. Well, did you I answer to... that? You did. Correct? No, you or did. Was you it did. a little too pitchy? <laughs> no, it was great. It was great. I appreciate it. And, you know, you mentioned that Boveda is, is global, right? So talk to me about the company's global footprint. Like where are y'all you know, really um, have market ownership? I mean, you know, where are you seeing uh, strong sales um, outside of the U.S.? I would imagine the U.S. is up there. Yeah, well, yes, the U.S. Um, and each each territory really needs to be looked at independently right now. We try not to measure things against one another because it's a quick way to believe that there's a loss of opportunity. And the truth is the numbers tell us that cannabis consumption has increased people's desire for cannabis use in, um, in replacement for other things, but traditional pharma light drugs or wellness like um, drugs is increasing the new user changes on us every single year. We favorable to 65 plus older. You have your 19 to 26. You have that mid range market of people who are looking and might have had a stigma against cannabis, but now are looking at it as part of a wellness objective. So when we look at our global reach right now, we, we're in 103 countries um, as a brand and really driving home 55 countries as cannabis. Cannabis. So we go where the market has um, energy. And, and I think that that's important because as the plant grows across all different climates, Bovida has access to seeing the integration of our technology to mother nature. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that in, in a testing environment. You really need to take some field data of understanding how things are working because there's so, there's, complexities to the plant and to the way that people cultivate it, especially given the ambient temperatures. So when we look at our Bovida landscape from a global position, we believe we we get an opportunity to be a bridge and really to talk to people about what's happening to the plant and other environments that might be like theirs. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you going to find from Columbia that you might use in the States? What are you going to use from Colorado's dry climate that you might use someplace else? We're constantly using these other forms to provide better guidance to our customers. And I think it it, it provides us to be an access to global cannabis, even though it's it's a little higher level at the water activity level to give people some understanding of the plant. Plus, it's exciting. We've got a team at Spanibus this week. We've got teams getting out to Germany. We've got teams going into Thailand and Colombia, tests being run in Tel Aviv. I mean, we just have an opportunity to look at so many different pockets of areas of the way the plant's grown. It's it's quite fascinating. See, and that's what's interesting to me, right? I mean, because it's all about data these days, right? And so it sounds like you being in what you said over 103 countries. there's a lot of data. There's a lot of, you know, information that you're gathering, like you said, in terms of climate and growing and, you know, soil, I'm sure all this, this kind of stuff. So how are you, I'm I'm specifically curious about how you're tracking like intent of purchase, right? So like, you know, you mentioned that you have products that cater to cigars for, you know, humidifying purposes, uh, musical instruments, cannabis as well. And when I purchase my pack, there's, you know, there's a certain, I recommended a certain um, number, right, on the package that is geared toward the product. So is that kind of how you're initially tracking intent? I mean, is there other ways? Yeah. So, I mean, our strategy was we created a formula that was precise for this exact form of storage. We wrote the RH levels specifically for cannabis. We're not kind of repurposing things, though people will as our product portfolio expands. But when we looked at both cigars, 
musical instruments and cannabis. We enlisted our scientists on staff and our engineering and product manufacturing team to say, this is the gap. It isn't that we have a 58 or a 62 RH. It's that cannabis needs to be stored at this level to uh, protect against the dry barrier, which is quality, and protect against the safety barrier, which is mold. And then we wrote our RH levels. So our intent to buy really is rooted in the design that this product, with its precision, will do what it promises to do on the packet. And so that's why you see the higher RH for tobacco because they have a higher yield to mold and lower RHs as you go in. They're each specifically written for that application specific. Now there are different items that might use the same RH, but uh, you know our intent to buy was really to get in first and say, there's a problem, a crisis with the evaporation of cannabis. We knew mm-hmm. that to be. Certain because we save the turps, save 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 the the turps, save the turps, save the turps, and our hats here too, right? There it is. Yeah, for those Um, that are just listening, uh, Shannon just pulled out a cap, save the turps. Yes, save the turps cap. That's our, you know, we really had a mission in 2019 to say we want to talk to people about what they're losing. And terpenes are still something that we haven't seen a lot of education on, but we do know that it's the compound that's giving, administering the deliverable. And as long as people are looking at that, that precision that we've written for Bovida is that in a nutshell, it's there to save the terps and to sequester them in so that once you post grind, they're all there with those medical compounds for you to enjoy, whether mm-hmm. it's however you determine to use it. That's really where we sit. you know, let's make sure you get the best quality out of what you've purchased. And for those people who are growing it, let's take care of your prized possession. Right. Let's right. make sure she shows up on shelves the same way she did in your grow room when you were so proud looking at your harvest. I mean, let's make sure that that's the way people feel when they they buy your pre-roll or your eighth jar and they really feel that love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and then just, you know, speaking about data also, do you see any trends of like cross sell? You know, you met we mentioned earlier, you talked about like the the cannabis consumption rate is increasing, right? We've, we've read it in articles about how um, it's in some places, the tax uh, taxation is almost equivalent to alcohol, right? So are you seeing like cigar smokers, like maybe you start buying these, these cannabis RH level packets, uh, you know, to preserve their cannabis? Absolutely. I mean, I think we would be, uh, I think to say that music and cannabis have been f- fond friends for decades <laughs> That's true, is yeah. a safe statement to say. I think whenever you look at cigar users, especially in smokable flour. So what you know to be true is in smokable flour, a cigar enthusiast already has a lighter. They already have an ashtray. They are used to smoking. So that's a natural audience that could try things out in smokable flour, and that would probably be their product deliverable. Uh, I think where you see the crossover really is that it's not isolated to a certain demographic. I believe that most people are curious about what cannabis does, what it could do for them Mm -hmm. and how they could take a look at how it works within their own life. And that's, prevalent in cigar smokers or musical instrument providers or, you know, anyone of that nature. They don't uh, delineate based off that, but we do find similarities to demographic and we try not to live too much in those because I think we can agree in the last three years, the buying behavior of consumers has definitely switched and, and, and we're, we're addressing that audience where they are right now. And you can't get lost in old numbers and you can't always get lost in the data from previous existing things. This is an environment where we really need to look at everything and make sure, like you said, with the subscription, our goal is to make sure that cannabis enthusiasts never have to worry about dry cannabis, harsh smoke. And in order to do that, we want the subscription online so they never run out. How has it changed? You mentioned it's changed. What are you seeing in terms of the the consumer has changed? 
Well, I mean, I think the consumer change happened around COVID where, and I, you know, you hate to bring the COVID terminology into the conversation. No, that's fine. It was a horrible time. We were all locked in and right. cannabis was essential. And so that's cannabis what you're talking about. A cannabis yeah. was essential. And maybe at that time, people had an opportunity to explore. When you're, we know that the majority of cannabis users prefer to use at home. So you had a safe environment where you could dose. You could maybe, if you were somebody who was a little nervous about how you would behave, you could really isolate that. So I think through that COVID experience, people were a little bit more um, creative in how much they wanted to explore. We saw our cigar usage go up probably because people were at home and they could hop outside and have a cigar and they probably wouldn't do that at work. So that changed the landscape for all of us, regardless of where you sat in business. But also it changed the landscape of knowing that there's so many different access points to buy and how consumers are finding validation of who they buy from. Bovida wants to be known as a trusted advisor and some a, a product that takes care of your passions. And in order to do that, we have to build up that trust with consumers. And to do that, we have to be transparent about what's in our product and how, how organic it is and how it interacts with cannabis. But we also need to be abreast of what does that younger demographic look, want? What does the older demographic want? Do they want to go into stores? Do they prefer shopping at home? What's the delivery services from cannabis? all of those shift based off what location you're looking at. So again, we try to build a business plan that works broadly for our enterprise, but also addresses each microclimate's rules and regulatory as well. It's mm -hmm. not the easiest job. <laughs> no. I'll say that, you know, like I, I try to tell people it's, it's the complexity that you can really only appreciate if you're in the weeds with the rest of us, like most of our counterparts know, but it's, it's a lot of work to stay um, abreast of all the rules and regulations, but we've changed in the fact of just knowing consumers want fresh cannabis mm -hmm. and highest yield quality and businesses want repeat consumers and right. our <clears throat> product is a fast track to, to ensuring that whatever you have on the shelf will have that positive deliverable. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. I mean, I'm a repeat customer, like I mentioned Thank earlier. You. And <laughs> well, I did not uh, pay you to say that either. No, you did not. Absolutely not. No, I got to keep my cannabis fresh. Are you kidding? Absolutely. Me? Yeah, you know, and I all great companies evolve, right? And and Bovida is the global leader, as we've talked about, in two way humidity control. You know, for musical instruments, cigars, cannabis. Um, my question for you is. What what is what new innovations are in Bovida's pipeline? I mean, are there other products that y'all are planning to roll out in the future specific to the cannabis industry? Um, I mean, I think a, a cool like wooden box like a humidifier would be amazing. Um, but that's just me. But tell me, like, what if there's a, if you can, what what's what's coming down the pipeline? Sure. Um Tons. You know, we're a company rooted in innovation, but we don't divert from what we're really great at, which is providing our technology. We're, we're, we want to be known as the SME in the industry so people can trust in moisture dependency and ways to store their, pa their passions. That being said, as the cannabis landscape grows and product configurations change, we're constantly in market trying to find out what are those new deliverables for consumers? What are they looking at for pre-rolls? How, how much quantity will they be able to buy? All of those um, decisions impact what kind of product delivery, delivery we bring out. And of course, we're using the best of new innovations with our technology, as well as any collaborations that make sense within the landscape. So you know, look for us in storage solutions. That's really our gear is to make sure that you have the Bovida product that's right for the use case, albeit a pre-roll to a cigar, to a wooden instrument, but really uh, synonymously with cannabis. Just think of the sizing and then the ease of um, storage for consumers and businesses to bring it to market. Mm -hmm. What does Bovida mean? Bovida. 
<laughs> I mean, the story, and I, I have to make sure that I have this because at a 25 year old company, you have it, but Bovida means vault in Spanish. And um, really, that's what we were trying to incorporate, which is when you put your product in an airtight or a sealed container and you put the Bovida engine inside, you essentially have created a vault system to protect your passions. At the time, it was cigars because we understood that they, the loss of moisture and the loss of evaporation of the oils and sugars completely changed the deliverable of the way the cigar smoked, the length of the smoke of the cigar and the overall enjoyment and the texture. Um, and so Bovida in Spanish means vault. And so that was the original. And, and we, we love our name. Even if people say it wrong, we're happy. We laugh about Bovida. Boveda, Boveda, Bovida, Bovida, just, <laughs> just by it is what we say. We're happy to, we're happy that you call us by our name, regardless of how you pronounce it. Yeah, and there's really no company that's similar to even sounding like Bovida or Bovida or, I, I mean, I, I, nothing that I can think of. So you're in the clear there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We like to, I mean, you know, we all, hope that the companies we work for are considered special amongst our peers. We definitely believe that, um, you know, when you're coming to work every day within the plant and for a company you have, you know, that's part of the belief system that allows you to stay happy in your career is to work for companies that you truly believe in the strategy, um, the technology, the culture, um, the mission statement. I think we all look for businesses that we can feel proud about, who we work for and the people for which we serve. And I can say that to be true about Bovida in both instances, proud of the company I work for and very proud of the people I serve in the cannabis community. Yeah. I mean, it's evident. You can definitely tell you're passionate about what you do. And that leads me to my next question. I mean, you, you know, a lot about uh, the cannabis, obviously we're learning every day with this, you know, ever evolving industry, but what's your relationship with the plant personally? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you know, I'm a user. I'm a user. I have interjected it into a wellness program for myself that has worked really well for me personally. Um, cannabis is unique as nutrition. And the more we can understand that it isn't a single path for anyone, it opens up the environment to really allow yourself to have your own personal diagnosis using doctors, using reading literature, having fun with it in, you know, a recreational sense, but really rooting back to saying the majority of users are looking to cannabis because it is going to positively impact their life. It did for me. It did for me. It allowed me to breathe in a little bit of creativity that I didn't usually see using it in a microdose format and and then at times to have fun but really around an overall wellness regimen um, of cannabis and inflammation overall mood and attitude i mean i could go on about some of the things that i believe it's um, positively impacted my life but i think the way that to look at it is to say what works for you and we all have those puzzle pieces whether it be diet exercise exercise and cannabis or meditation and water and, you know, <laughs> weightlifting, whatever those th things are for you that you get your optimal, optimal health, let cannabis, you know, throw cannabis in the ring and see if that's something that you would like to add to your wellness routine. For me personally, it's, it's worked, but uh, again, I go back to just saying for people, it's like, use this as an individual path for you to right. explore and don't write it off if it's an opportunity to give you a better quality of life. Right. And if you're, if you're not a fan of the psychoactive properties that THC gives, then, you know, look into CBD or, you know, um, another, you know, compound within the cannabis plant, because right. um, there are benefits where outside of just, you know, getting high and feeling that, that sensation. I mean, like yeah. you said, inflammation, CBD is great for that. CBN is great for sleep. I mean, there's times when I go to the gym, I, I like to, to lift weights, right? So when I'm feeling sore or if I think I pulled something, I'm immediately going to like CBD cream. Papa yeah. Markley makes a great one, you know? Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah. I mean, it's just, I, like I, 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 use, I use that. I agree with, I agree with you on that. And, and you've been in the industry for such a long period of time. This is why we want the stigma reduced so that people can go into dispensaries with an educated bud tender and really show people the scope of what's out there. It is right. not a be this way or be this way. There are a lot of in-betweens. You want mints, you want beverages, you want edibles, you want cookies, you want flour, you want a pre-roll, you want this flavor, you want this deliverable. I mean, that's why it's such a fun experience to really lock in what you want for yourself and not feeling like you have to do what your friend or your brother or somebody right next to you did. It's all unique based off what people are looking for. Right. And it's something that, I mean, some like me, someone who's in a state where heavily prohibition, right? Texas being one, it's like I, my family next door lives in New Mexico. And, you know, going there and having those options is just a beautiful thing because I think it would eliminate a lot of other, I, I mean, quote unquote, vices and you know, people have, like maybe overdoing with alcohol or, you know, smoking cigarettes or, you know, whatever it is. Um, it's just, it's just nice to have the accessibility. So hopefully, you know, these other states that have not gone adult use will, um, will do so very quickly because we're seeing the domino take place, you know, throughout yeah. the country. And we see, you know, we see it with, um, people in integrated, um, uh, medicine and, and, and maybe people who are in a more wellness rooted healthcare derivative are exploring this and just letting people know, again, we're not trying to create cannabis to be another vice. We right. are looking at the way that the plant was intended to be used and Absolutely. where it grows from your physical dependencies on it. And then you add in the virtual of this kind of world. That is a, a whole new generation of people that we're going to need to understand. What are the downsides of being so virtually connected? We won't know that for another 10 years, but early indicators are gut issues, stress, lack of sleep because of blue lights. I mean, these are just things a lot of times we're combating new innovation and technology that has, has changed the way that we, we work or the way we sleep. I mean, we can't, I, I, you can't deny that you're sleeping differently today than you were pre iPhone. Absolutely. Isn't it amazing that we're living through that time right now? <clears throat> like our genetic makeup as humans is literally changing because of the you know, 24 seven interaction with technology that we encounter and, and the screen time. I and mean, if you think about it, obviously screen time with your phone is a lot, but after your day at work, looking at a at a t at a monitor or your phone, you come home. You're probably watching TV, right? Um, so like, there's just this hopefully constant not. screen. Yeah. yeah, I mean, hopefully not, but the majority of people do, right? Yeah. I mean, they're they're not yeah, getting yeah. exercise. They're not getting sun. They're not drinking water or getting their electrolytes. And and you you touched on a lot of those things. And like you said, cannabis can be used as a tool. Um, in that kind of health repertoire um, and, and adding it in, right? To, to yeah. either- it's a, it's a resource. It's a resource that should be looked at um, in any decision-making, no different than you would, um, you know, looking at getting on a new medicine or adopting a new health regimen that you, with some consistency, thought you would be able to to keep doing. Um, and And I think that's, when we get more places that allow people like us to have that desire and then go in and be served through education and guidance, we're going to get better results. And those people are going to talk better about it because they're going to have benefits and it's going to help keep breaking down that stigma. And it might take longer than all of us have hoped. I thought we all, I think we all thought we would be here today. I mean, if I'm being honest in 2023, we had built a strategy that looked at legalization by 2023 and we're not there, but you know, the, not even close. No, but the, it maybe, maybe sometimes the things that wait are worth it. You know, there's a sure. lot of things that happen, but for surely for Boveda's position, you know, 280E and looking at the tax simplifications that are really mm. harming the legal market and not allowing them to play fair. And then interstate commerce and safe banking so that we don't have people who are 
feeling like they need to protect themselves because they have cash everywhere, that's not going to yield positive behavior on even to the best people we're setting them up for, for some struggling times. So if legalization doesn't happen, which we know is going to take longer than we had anticipated, we need to start getting some resources to those people through the forms of tax relief and, and just some understanding of what does long range interstate commerce look like so they can build out. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, those are those are very interesting points that you raise and the time will tell, right? I mean, we're we're still in like the first inning of this yeah. of this uh industry and it's just great to see a company like uh Bovida just, you know, 25 years and just continue to move strong and focus specifically on cannabis and how, you know, other applications of your product can really add value. So, yeah. Shannon, thank you so much for your time this evening. Is there anything you want to, you want to leave the audience with before we wrap up? You know, um, a tons. I hope I said enough. I told you this was my first podcast, so there's a little nerve great. Yeah. Thank you. But when you're when you're talking about um, an environment like cannabis that people are so passionate about, I think what I'd like them to leave with is the my peers, specifically the people who are working in the market on the sales team that are talking to people about their cultivation, they really, really care about their customers. I was sharing with somebody, if I could compensate equitable to care, um, we'd be writing million dollar checks because (laughs) they are interested and they're invested. So when we ask questions and we're coming to the table, we really want people to look at us as a consultant because our end goal is that that brand or that company be successful. And water activity in Bovida technology is just one small facet, but we're definitely invested in the long the long play on this for our customers to stay in the game and to thrive and to succeed and move through this little glitch in time and really come out on the other side with some some strong consumer brands and think we're the ones who can say we were we were here in chapter and whether you consider it chapter number one or number two, it's the first, it's the first 20 pages of the book and, and the rest is left to be written and just really excited about how that, how that plays out, even in, even during challenging times. And, you know, as our CEO would say, especially during challenging times, this is, this is the time to really show um, what you're made of and, and, and stay the course and do the right thing for the, for the customer and for the category. And that's what we're committed to at Bovida. Very well said. I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much again for your time, Shannon. Where can people find uh, Bovida's website, social media, if they want to learn more about, um, you know, your your products? Oh, sure. You know, I mean, we're always fans. If you go and follow us on Instagram, even though we're shadow banned like everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> join the club, up, right? But, <laughs> you know, we we still have to do it. So, you know, our Bovida Fresh handle at Instagram shows a lot of. Um, a lot of our pictures around the flower and just people who package with and just cool things around the, the category. And then of course, if you go to Bovida direct, we would love to have an opportunity to win your business in the subscription and learn more about the way that our product interacts with the, with the plant. And we're constantly updating our Bovida direct site at, um, Bovida Inc.com. And so that's a great point of record for us to keep real time information on, on what we're working on on a global scale. Awesome. Hey, random question really quick. How long do each uh packet last? Like what's a what's the shelf life for each one? Typically? Great question. It does depend. And and the reason that it depends is the quality of the flower and what RH level when you put it into the container as well as the headspace. So the couple recommendations we just say is use the smallest container needed right? Because the headspace around it, the Bovida will try to um, bring to equilibrium. But this is what I would say, without a doubt, you're going to get three to six months. And in most cases, if you got an airtight airtight, uh, container for some stuff you want to store for a special occasion, I have people sending me messages that they found uh, product package with Bovida from five years ago that they pulled open and, and let breathe and grinded down and enjoyed a great smoke. So, wow. you know, I think, I think to each of us, but the low, low cost of Bovida, I would just ask your audience and anyone listening is just give it a try. 97% of the people through our Bovida challenge side-by-side results told us they had a, a better experience when they had product 
package with Bovida. So I think a lot of it is just test it out, throw it in the jar, make sure your buds nice and fluffy, get that sticky icky and it'll, it'll be a great smoke. We, we promise that it'll be a great smoke. Save the Terps. Save, Save the Terps, the Terps. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks again, Shannon. And thank you all for listening. Thank Bye. you.